The um, ILW, as you know, stands for International Longshore and Warehouse Union. And it's a very important uh, union within the United States, actually internationally, in part because it is a very internationalist union. Uh, it was begun as an organization of dock workers. Uh, it is a break-off union from the larger, what was then national union, the International Longshoremen's um, Association. Um, which was the organization, the union, that ran the 1934 strike. And then in 1937, during the period when there was uh, the development of the CIO, uh, the Congress of Industrial Organizations, a group of people within the I, what became the ILWU, particularly Harry Bridges, but a whole lot of others as well, really preferred to be a CIO rather than an AFL, American Federation of Labor Union. So the employers hated Harry Bridges, partly because he was so uh, effective, so articulate. He uh, uh, takes the um, uh, waterfront workers out of, uh, for the most part, out of the ILA, International Longshore Association, that dominates the East Coast. Although Tacoma stayed with the ILA through till the early 1950s, but otherwise most of the coastwise uh, waterfront workers became ILWU members. They left the uh, ILA, International Longshore Association, and joined the CIO, uh, Congress of Industrial uh, Organization. But Harry n never ever had any hint that he uh, was in it for himself or that he could be uh, bought or that he was intimidated by him. He was a stand-up guy, and uh, I admired him a great deal. It, uh, I, I think that uh, an objective person would regard his um, career as a um, labor leader in the, in the first ranks. I think that he set a standard of what a good labor leader should be. He wasn't right all the time, and he wasn't lovable all the time. And as Nikki said, he certainly was no saint, but uh, he was an honest trade unionist, and that's pretty important. The thought occurred to me that we were talking about all these other chairs and institutes and things that, um, honored business, uh, ethnic groups, and there's nothing to reflect the, Washington's rich history in, in labor. And so I, I thought, you know, maybe we ought to have something. I didn't really wasn't clear on what a chair was at the time. We really ought to have something to honor labor, and who better to honor than Harry? But when we were raising the money initially, there was resistance on the part of some people in the administration, uh, one of whom happened to be um, the main fundraising person. But the basic object uh, objection seemed to be, or prejudice as I thought, they thought that a chair dedicated to Harry Bridges, of all people, uh, would be a vehicle for propaganda among the students. And we can't, you know, Bob, we just can't have a chair that's dedicated to propaganda. <laughs> you know, I got that. and. I kept my cool amazingly well under those circumstances. But there was that kind of prejudice. The other big player in this, of course, was Gerberding, who was then the president of the University of Washington, who thought this was a great idea, despite um, the fact that the development people at the time were very nervous. They'd never seen a grassroots campaign of this sort succeed that the way you collect money and raise money for a major center is through one major donor and a couple of their friends, maybe, um, rich people. 
and not this kind of grassroots effort. So it's become a model internationally for a new way to raise money around important people. So Dugan, luckily, he had been chair of the Alumni Association. And to Martin, that was labor leadership, was that you never uh, shed the everyday, work-a-day uh, world. Yeah, Phil was a very large man uh, as well, greatly respected, not just uh, in Local 23 in Tacoma, but up and down the West Coast. She had served in the international office at 1188 Franklin Street and as a staffer, she raised some questions uh, before Harry Bridges about how the staff was being overworked or ill compensated. Uh, she's a very strong woman. She also was a very cultured woman. Her appreciation of art was quite uh, substantial. One of our uh, strongest early uh, supporters was Nikki Bridges. Uh, her husband uh, had passed. She took a very strong early interest in the development of the Bridges Chair, and she brought a number of things to the enterprise. She was a published uh, poet and short story writer under the, her, her full name, Noriko Sawada. She believed in the Bridges Chair. Um, D David Olson was the first Bridges Chair, um, a political scientist, largely interested in uh, collect big collective action, racial justice, and urban and state level issues, state government. Um, what he was, what he did for the chair was really important. Uh, I mean, everybody has made a major contribution. But his was to, one, really establish it firmly at the university, to fight the fight that had to be fought with the provost and deans and others, um, establish a steering committee, establish a, a place for it in the university. Well, I, Chuck Berkowitz brought uh, substantial uh, resources to the chair. He was an outstanding, accomplished labor scholar, well respected in his uh, field, and carried on that uh, research while he held uh, the Bridges Chair. Each of the Bridges Chairs puts their own stamp on it. Margaret put several stamps on it, but one of them was cultural outreach, artistic expression. And um, she had four enormously successful years. She brought gender four square to the enterprise. She uh, integrated a lot of her own work, and some of it was uh, with me, of co-authoring uh, some work on the WTO, uh, on the ILWU itself. Uh, Mike Huddy brought a uh, set of skills that uh, were very important to the Bridges Chair. His work on race and labor is uh, recognized in his uh, particular field as among the nation's best. Daniel, Dan brought the link with Bothell. Um, he's very interested in a whole bunch of technological changes and uh, political economic changes in the structure of work. Once in his position as Bridges Chair, uh, Gregory has done a variety of things, but not least of them has been this major work to fund uh, a, a labor archive for the state of Washington. That labor archive, and Jim uh, put a lot of energy into that. He made it possible to hire a labor archivist. He got contributions uh, from the Longshore Union, from the State Labor Council, from King County uh, Labor Council. Uh, so that's a major accomplishment on his part and it will continue and 
you know, 100 years from now, people are going to be going in and looking up uh, what was happening in the uh, turn of the uh, century that we're currently in. So um, I have nothing but uh, respect for what Jim has done on the archives. When I look at the departments of political science and, and history, I think that we have incredibly promising leadership uh, coming. George Lovell is an outstanding scholar who is one of the nation's primary researchers on the politics of uh, labor. He is very skillful as an administrator. Uh, the chair will be in excellent hands. Well, I think there have been several impacts on students. Um, the, the one that in some ways was the hardest was to make those students who weren't aware of labor unions and hadn't thought about them, even though sometimes their own parents were in labor unions, or to think about labor issues and labor rights and protections and how hard they were to win and how easy they are to lose, um, to make students aware of that. We wanted to encourage students to, to really gain interest in labor studies, then we had to do something about um, having funding for them and for research. Being a home for students who want to learn about um, union activities or know about union activities and are afraid to express them. Um, when I started the university, uh, I'm sure there were working kids here, or, or the children of working class people here, but you never heard about it. It, it, it was sort of like, uh, uh, you know, the first question you'd always be asked, what's your dad do for a living, you know? The working class kids were always intimidated by that kind of, kind of talk. So one of the things I think uh, the Br Bridges Center has done is taught university kids it's all, all right to be a member of the uh, great working class. There's a lot of us. It's also had an impact on activism. Um, and so uh, one of the things I insisted upon having uh, when I was chair was an undergraduate assistant as well as a graduate assistant. So sort of bring, to one, create a link with the undergraduates and two, to provide some additional help. And it became very obvious that there were students very keen to engage in activism and I encouraged them. Well, the whole sweatshop thing, that, that's been a big, thing and the, the, the fact that they were able to move the university to take a principled stand on on how on the what kind of sportswear gets the nod from the university that's been a big thing its contributions will be con to continue to make the university community that is the students the faculty the staff and the administrators aware and of, of the importance of protecting labor rights, particularly now in this era when there seems to be a lot of pushback against labor rights. So having a center that sees as its ethical commitment um, the promotion of the rights of labor and the protection of labor, whether it be through unions or some other process, is I think critical on a university campus in these days. The forestry profession has the forestry school. The business profession's got the business school. The uh, lawyers have got the law school. What do workers have? They got the Harry Bridges Chair and the Harry Bridges Center for Labor Studies. That's terribly important. The way I would explain it to a longshore members was you got a seat at the table and there are some other people who are sitting around at the table who've had a seat a lot longer than uh, yours but we're gonna make sure that your voice is heard that um, things that are untoward toward workers on the campus will not be tolerated that students will be allowed to join in organizing against some of the practices of the university, uh, trading of uh, uh, apparel that has been produced in some standard uh, conditions. 
is going to be an issue with students. So labor having a seat at the table can speak truth to power and students will do it, affiliated faculty members will do it, leadership of the program will do it and uh, it's been a wonderful marriage of the academy and uh, working uh, people uh, in the locale, in the region. So, you know, there's, there's a beacon of light that emanates from the labor uh, scholars on this campus that catches the eye of others around the campus. Chris.